Can we take a moment tonight? I know we're tired. Take a moment and just worship him today. And if you don't feel like it, that means it's the perfect time to do it. Regardless of how you feel. Lift him up right now. Jesus, you're great. Nobody like you. How great you are. How awesome, how mighty. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done, for your goodness, for your mercy, for your grace. Thank you for moving in our hearts, our lives, God, working and saving and delivering and healing. Nobody like you, Jesus. Not one single one. Holy, unique, separate, God of power and might. Praise God. Praise God. I love to worship the Lord. Yes, if you would, that would be great. Thank you. You can have a seat here tonight. Praise God. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. I was running a little bit behind today. Well, we've been talking about praise the last few times that I've gotten up here. And I, I, I thought tonight that I would finish up talking about praise. Not because there's, I've said all that there is to say. Not even close. But because I've got to stop at some point <laughs> and move on to something else. So we're going to talk about it again. But this is not by any means all that there is in Scripture about how great our God is. <laughs> not even close. If that song... I see the stars. Have you ever stopped to consider the vastness of the universe? How, how large? There are stars that are millions of light years away. In other words, it takes that long for the light to get to us. Our God is bigger than that. You know, every time that they start going, so I like to, sometimes I like to go up and consider how great God is, how vast the universe. And sometimes you can go down. They thought for a long time that this is all there was, and then some guy came up with the idea of atoms. They said, well, the whole world is composed of nothing but atoms. And then they found out the atoms were made of something, electrons, protons, neutrons. Then they thought that was all there was, and then they found out that the electrons and the protons and the neutrons, they were made of something. And I have a sneaking suspicion that the further they dig that the universe is going to be just as vast going down microscopically as it is going up into the, the skies because we serve a great God. Praise God. That's not in my notes, but there you go. All right. We've been talking about praising him. We've been talking about what you can praise him for, praising him for what he's done, both in the word of God and also what he's done for you personally. By the way, that doesn't change. We forget sometimes what God has done. But it doesn't change the fact that he did it. The children of Israel are out in the wilderness complaining. And saying, we wish you would have left us alone. We wish you would have left us to die in the wilderness. Because they had forgotten the mighty hand that he had brought them out with. He fed them every day. But they kept forgetting that he was taking care of him. They they, they got so focused on their current need and their current hunger that they forgot how great of a God they served. So remember the things that he's done for you in the past. Because remember, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he did it at any time, he can do it at any time. If he did it in any place, he can do it in any place. If he did it for anyone, he can do it for anyone. Then we praise God for not just what he's done, but who he is. We talked about some of his attributes. He's faithful. (laughs) He is faithful. The Bible says, "Let, let God be true and every man a liar. Because we, we struggle being faithful. Or maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me that struggles. 
But I know it's hard sometimes. We, we fail, we fall. God has never made a mistake. He's never failed the promise. Not one single time. He told Abraham, your children are going to have this land forever. And for 2,000 years, the nation of Israel did not exist. Well, God failed. No, God was just setting the stage. <laughs> to me, that's one of the, the greatest, not only of God's faithfulness, but the, of the, God, the truthfulness of the word of God. Who could imagine that a nation that had been gone for almost 2,000 years would be revived and born again? There is not one single instance of that in history except for one, the nation of Israel. God is not just faithful, he's just. He's, you know what, that's actually, that is awesome and terrible. It's awesome because he's going to be just to those who have done you wrong. And terrible because unless you listen to him, he's going to be completely just and completely fair to you as well. We serve both an awesome and a terrible God. But God is not just just, he's also merciful. He said, this is the way. I have prepared a path for you. You can escape my justice. You can, you can, you can, there's a way for you to be cleansed and not have to face the terribleness that's going to happen to those that don't turn their hearts and lives over to God. He is holy. Unique, separate. There is none like him. He is gracious. He is omnipotent. There is nothing he cannot do. He is omniscient. There is nothing he does not know. He's omnipresent everywhere at all times, and he is eternal, which is more than just he's been around for a long time. It means he exists at all times. We, we have no actual understanding. We can't even begin to grasp what that means. I've heard so many different examples. I'm not even going to go over any of them. We, we, can't, we can't wrap our minds around eternity. And yet that is integral to who God is. It's what he's always existed in. It, it, it's part of who he is. It'll be a part of who he is. And eventually it'll be a part of who we are. When we enter eternity to be with him. Then we started talking about the actual ways, uh, or actual, actual words to use when praising God. We got into the names of God, and we started going through some of the names in the Old Testament that the children of Israel used to worship the Lord. We talked about Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer, physical, emotional, spiritual. Sometimes he doesn't hear the physical because he's more concerned about the emotional and spiritual. He could leave me hurting. Yeah, if that's what it took for you to have a whole mind and a whole soul. I don't like that preaching, Brother Tim. I don't know. Okay, well, you take it up with him. Paul prayed several times. He said, remove this thorn from my flesh. Remove this cause of pain. And God looked, Paul, well, he didn't, I don't know if Jesus was physically in front of him, but bear with me for a second. He looked him in the eyes and said, no, not going to do it, Paul. Think about that for a moment. That one of the greatest missionaries that has ever graced the earth, he said, God, bring me healing. And God looked him in the eye and said, not going to do it. All right. Being a downer, Brother Tim, I'm sorry. But he knew that that was what Paul needed to remain whole spiritually. And the whole physical, I suspect, the Bible does not say this uh, explicitly, but I suspect that what would have happened had Paul gotten healed, the temptation would have been, uh, Paul, look what Paul did. Look what Paul set up. Look what I did by the, the strength of my own arm. God said, I'm going to make sure you have no strength so that when people see what Paul did, they'll know that it was God that did it, not Paul. All right, anyway. Again, that's not in my notes. I don't know why I'm saying that. 
Talked about Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, our banner, our our refuge, our victory. Uh, Jehovah Shema, the Lord who is present all times, everywhere. I I love that statement that he, he was with the children of Israel. He was with the saints in the Old Testament. But he's not with us. He is in us. That's a whole order of magnitude greater. Jehovah Sidkenu, that one's just fun to say. Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord, our righteousness. The Bible says that our righteousness, what we do, is like filthy rags. And that's why he prepared the way. He said, look, Brother Charlie, you're not going to get into heaven on your righteousness. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you my righteousness. That's what's going to get you through the pearly gates, not what you've done. You could volunteer at every soup kitchen from here until eternity, and it would not be enough. But God said, you know what? We're, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to give you my righteousness. How about Jehovah Shema? The Lord our peace, the peace that passes understanding. Jehovah Ra, the Lord our shepherd. Here's one you've probably heard before, Jehovah Jireh my provider. And then the one that took me by surprise, the one I had not considered, but Jehovah Roy, the Lord who sees. I, I, that just, you mean you'd never read that? No, I've read it before. But sometimes when you read something and you pass right over it and then you read it the next time or maybe even the 10th time and something leaps out at you and I just, I'd never thought about the fact that God says, I see you. And the woman that called God that was not one of the chosen. She was an Egyptian, well, for like Egyptian slave. And she said, God sees me. Hmm. He sees you. Maybe that doesn't mean anything to you, but it means something to me. He sees me. When I think I'm going through something all by myself, when I think no one knows how I feel, he is the God who sees. But there are many other ways to praise God. And I, I just want to kind of wanted to touch on some tonight. I like songs that, that begin to name his attributes. Uh, one of my, we don't sing it here probably because it's a, uh, uh, it's not complicated, but it, it doesn't work w- well in a worship service uh, because the, there's two parts during the course, two people singing, two groups singing two different things, but it's just he is Lord, he is Lord of Lords, he's King of Kings, the mighty God, Lord of everything. <laughs> I'm actually going to have to stop and sing it in my head because otherwise I'm not going to get it. Uh, He's Alpha, Omega, beginning and end. My Savior, Messiah, Redeemer, my friend. He's a living God. I'm I'm totally off track. I'm sorry. (laughs) I love the song. I sing it in my head all the time, and apparently it has just gone clean out. It's been a long day. But I love songs that they, they, they start to name who he is. Tammy doesn't change our problems. But when we start remembering who he is, it puts our problems in perspective. Again, children of Israel, we're focusing on being hungry. We're focusing on not being where we want to be. And we get our eyes off of the fact that God brought us out of Egypt fed us in the wilderness has taken care of us for 40 years and we're going to complain and fuss and like why because we've taken our eyes off of him and put him on our problems so we start naming who he is what he's done you use words when you're worshiping god you know he's our deliverer he's our savior he he's the way maker he is a promise keeper are those words in scripture no but those concepts are integral to who he is he's a wonderful counselor a mighty god the everlasting father 
the Prince of Peace. All of those things are titles that he carries, that he wears, and you can use them in praise to him. And understand that they're not just words. They are descriptions of what he is. We got to be careful sometimes. Sometimes we, we, we can, again, I, I can only speak for Tim. Sometimes we, we, we can sing a song and sing it and not even think about what we're singing. And we, we can talk about God and not even think about what those words that we're saying mean. And then there's other times where you, you're singing a song that you've sung probably hundreds of times. I remember singing an old, old song. And, and, and I was, here, here we are, we're singing it again. Oh, goodness. Same old song. And I started to sing the verse and it was like God moved in. And he said, no, you haven't really considered what those words mean. And I started to weep as I sang it, a song I'd sung hundreds of times. Why? Because I started to think about what that actually meant. I started to think about what he'd done. I, I went from singing to praising. Sing with your praise team. They're wonderful. They sing well. They sing. They do a good job. Sing with your praise team. I don't sing well. I didn't say you sang well. I said sing with the praise team. <laughs> Build that habit. Build that, 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 that's the first thing that comes to your mind. Goodness. Oh. My goodness. We're going to go to a couple of verses. I want to pull some stuff out of Scripture. We're going, to, we're going to look at some words that come right out of the Bible and talk about them for a little bit. There are literally, you want to know what words to use in praise? Read your Bible. It's full of them. Best place for that is the book of Psalms. Tons of things in there. Tons of descriptions that talk about our God that, that, that give him life, that give him depth, that give him breadth, that give him meaning. First place we're going to go is Psalms, chapter 83, verse 11. I think I gave him the wrong verse because that is definitely not what I have. There's no telling. It's been a long day. Psalms 83. What I have here is for the Lord, God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Lord God is our sun and our shield. Now we're used to shield. We've heard that before. But did you know it says that he is our sun? Now, does that mean that he is that flaming ball of gas that's a few million miles away? No, he, he's not that sun. But he is like that sun to us. Anybody remember your basic science class? What happens if we have no sun? Aaron, do you remember? What happens if there's no sun? It's not that, Yeah. What's the temperature like at nighttime? Yeah, it gets real cold. You have no sun, it can get real cold all over, all the time. God gives us warmth. He makes life possible. Life without the sun would be impossible. Life without God, it may not be impossible, but it's incredibly difficult. But he is our sun. He is the source of our life. He is the source of light. You ever thought about that before? Anybody, uh, anybody uh, rush to the window when they get up to make sure the sun has come up? Are you really worried about that? Oh, goodness. Is the sun going to come up today? No, because it's faithful. <laughs> Just like our God. You can count on it. It's going to be there. God is like that. 
I could go all over the place with this. You know, the moon doesn't have any light of its own. It just reflects the light of the sun. Like us. People ever tell you you radiate something? You're not radiating of yourself. You're radiating the love of God. God's grace, God's glory, God's light, God's warmth, God's love should shine off. You should reflect that back to him. That's totally not in here. All right. Not only is he our son, he's also our shield. And you will see that all throughout scriptures, all over the Psalms. Sometimes uh, you'll have a translation. It may not say shield. It may say something like buckler. That's just really another word for a shield. Uh, well, it's a, let's, if we want to get technical, it's usually a smaller shield. But anyway, point is, is it something you use to defend yourself with? Sometimes it skips all that imagery and just says, he's my defense. Is God your defense? You know, if God's your defense, you've got a pretty good defense. We don't like to use God as our defense because he doesn't do things in our time. I'm kind of afraid to ask him to put up a verse now because I'm not sure if maybe I got others of these wrong. It's not his fault, by the way. I gave him to these very late in the day. He's my protection from attack. I was thinking about this when I was talking about shields. You know, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16 talks about another shield. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. You ever think about that? Psalm says that he is our shield. Then Paul talks about the shield of faith. Is there a link? Well, there is a link. Did you, because that faith is a faith not in some vague thing. Our faith is in a specific thing, our God. That faith, that shield of faith that Paul's talking about, he's not talking about having faith in faith. Faith in faith will dis- disappoint you. Faith in faith won't work. But if you have faith in God, that will protect you. You cling to that, there there ain't nothing. Why do you think Job could sit there having lost everything he had and say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him? Why do you think he could sit there and say, naked I came into this world, naked I go through the Lord, giveth the Lord, taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Circumstances are bad at that moment. But Job said, sling all you want at me. I am fa- my God is faithful to me and I am faithful to him. Sling all the darts, all the arrows, all the trials you want. I have faith in my God. What can they do with that? What can the enemy do with that? He can't do anything. When you get the, 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 the test results, and they don't tell you what you want to hear, have faith in God. I don't know the end result of this, but I do know one thing. My God is in control. The devil can't get around that. Does that mean you'll never be shaken? No. Everybody in here is a human being, right? Apparently I'm just the only one. All right. (laughs) You'll be shaken, but you hang on to that faith. God will bring you through. God will bring you through. Here's another one, uh, Proverbs 18.10. Proverbs has some things to talk about when it comes to praising the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it or run to it and are safe. I think there's a song in that somewhere. I like songs that come right out of the Bible. The oldest fortifications in the world were towers. Before there were walled cities, they were building towers. Before there were castles, there were just towers. Why? Because with a tower, you could get up there and you could see a long way out. You could spot the enemy before he ever got to where you were at. It was a place of safety, a place of defense. 
It's wall shelter from attack. It's, it's height. They say that a fortification, that a, 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 a force of men defending a fortress or a tower can beat off an army 10 to 20 times its size. That's how our God is to us. He's our strong tower. When everything assails us, we run to him. We take shelter in him. We shelter behind those thick walls. Does that mean the storm goes away? Does that mean the attack dissolves? No. But the fortress still stands. There's a song in that too. A mighty fortress is our God. Bulwark never failing. Psalm 62 and 7. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Several words there. I wanted to focus on my refuge. Now, in today's day and age, when we, when we uh, think of refuge, sometimes we think of refugees. And that is not a positive picture to us. Because refugees are generally, uh, no one wants to be a refugee, but a refugee is simply somebody who is seeking refuge. You were refugees from Hurricane Katrina, and you sought refuge in Arkansas, and we're thankful that you did, because we would never have met you if you hadn't. But you found refuge here. God is our refuge. Miriam Webster defines refuge as shelter or protection from danger or distress. A place that provides shelter or protection or something to which one has recourse in difficulty. But rather than something or somewhere, my refuge is someone. God is my refuge. When I don't understand, turn to him. When I'm angry, I turn to him. I, uh, I don't know if I've said it to anybody here, but I tell people all the time, it's okay to be angry at God. There are some preachers in some churches that say, no, the Bible is full of people who were angry with God. And when I say that, I don't mean that he punished them. No, they were, they were angry and got it. Do you really think that Job, when he was having his discussions with God, that he wasn't a little bit angry? Who created you? Who created your emotions? Who created your mind? God. Do you think that he creates something that he doesn't understand, William? He knows you inside out. He knows every emotion you have, every feeling you feel. He's big enough to handle your anger. But we stuff it on the inside. And anger stuffed down turns into something else. Why am I on this? Goodness. (laughs) Anger stuffed down turns into bitterness. And that's the root of a lot of things. A lot of sin is rooted in bitterness. God can take care of bitterness, but it's a lot easier to handle it while it's still anger. But He's your refuge. You run to Him, you turn to Him, you go to Him. When you're overwhelmed, Lead when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me, oh. <laughs> lead me to the rock that is higher than I. God is our strength in our song. That's what Exodus chapter 15 and verse 2 says. The Lord is my strength in song. <laughs> He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. Jesus kind of talked about the idea of this being of him, of God being our strength in John chapter 15 
in verse 5, he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. You ready for it? For without me, you can do nothing. He said, I'm the source of your strength. I'm the source that will keep you going on. When I'm at my wit's end and I'm at my, 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 final, my final last ounce of strength, you know what I usually discover is that I have been coming in my own strength. And when I turn to him, he's got boundless reserves of strength. So many of these concepts are, are intertwined, are, 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 are tied together. Because he's my strength, that is why he's my peace. Do I have strength to face horrible things? Frankly, no. But my God does. And because my God has the strength to help me face the horrible things, I can have peace in the face of horrible things that other people can't understand because God is my strength. joy of the Lord is my strength. I was thinking about this today. It says he's my strength. It also says he's, he's my song. We don't just sing songs about him. He is our song. Our source of joy. Why could Sister Rose worship the Lord? Because the Lord was the source of her joy. The C word couldn't take that away from her. You'll go through scripture, you'll find ideas, you'll find things like that, words, expressions to use. If you don't know how to worship the Lord, read your Bible. And then there are some that once you start looking, you start pulling on the strings, and they go from being just simple to being rich. I've already mentioned one. One of the things that the Word of God consistently refers to God as, Psalms chapter 18, verse 1 Psalms 18 and verse 1, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer. My God, my strength in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Now stop and think about that for a moment. He's my rock. Okay. Sounds simple enough. But start tugging on that string a little bit. Start tugging on that idea. Here in the verse that we just read, he's talking about, he's linking that again with strength, with fortress, with protection. What do they build castles on? They build castles on rocks. What do they build your house on? They build it on a firm foundation. They're building a skyscraper. They dig until they hit what? Bedrock. Why? Because it needs a firm foundation. So inside that idea of a rock is also the idea of having a firm foundation. Well, what does the foundation mean to me? Well, when the tower is on fire, do you go to closer to the foundation or further away from it? Do you climb to the top of the skyscraper? Or do you go to the bottom floor closer to the foundation? You run to where the foundation is at. Oh, here, here, this is a better idea for Arkansas. I forgot where I'm at. When the tornado comes through, do you climb up on the roof or do you go into the basement closer to the foundation? 
or the storm cellar. But you go down, you find, you find that rock, you find that foundation. You know what, though? Isaiah chapter 28, 16. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, behold, I lay in Zion a stone for a foundation, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not act hastily. So God is speaking through Isaiah. And he says, there's a, there's a stone, there's a cornerstone. Got any builders? I know we have some builders. Cornerstone, now, okay. You know what a cornerstone is then. God's talking about a precious cornerstone. Who's he talking about? A rock. Luke chapter 20, 17. Jesus looked at them and said, When then is this that is written? The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Whoever falls on that stone will be broken, but on whomever it falls, will be, I will grind him into powder. It will grind him into powder. Jesus is that sure foundation. Jesus is that precious cornerstone. Jesus is that rock. But you know what? I started digging some more. <laughs> because there's something else. This, this is something. Aaron, you ready for it? This is something incredible. Because the rock is not just your foundation. It's not just your strength. But see, when they were wandering around a desert place, and they got a little thirsty, I guess they had forgotten to bring their canteens. Or they'd run out of water. And in Exodus chapter 17, verse 5, the Lord said to Moses, Go on before the people and take with you some of the elders of Israel. Also take in your hand your rod with which you struck the river and go. And behold, I will stand before you there on the rock in Horeb. And you shall strike the rock and water will come out of it that my people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And water flowed out of a rock do you ever think that you'd be sustained with life giving water from a rock who's our rock God Jesus he supplies not just strength foundation will he gives you what you need to live I started digging even more. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, let's make it even more plain. This is more of a brother, and I do not want you to be unaware that all of our fathers, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1, were under the cloud, all passed through the sea. All were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food. Verse 4. And all drank that same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. People who say that Jesus, you can't see Jesus in the Old Testament, have not been looking very hard. God, the rock. The foundation, the strength, the fortress, the provider is there giving life, giving water. Jesus said, I'm the living water. Why? Because he was the rock. He was the rock the water came from. He said, out of your bellies will flow rivers of living water. Why? Because the rock that gives water can be in you. One more. I'm sorry, like I said, I started digging on the rock and that's where it came to an end. There ain't no rock like our rock. Dwayne the Rock Johnson ain't got nothing on Jesus. Daniel chapter 2, verse 31. You, O king, were watching and behold a great image. This great image, whose splendor was excellent, stood before you, and its form was awesome, or terrible, as the King James puts it. In other words, this is a statue like nothing you've ever seen before, king. The image's head was of fine gold, 
its chest and arms of silver and its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. You watched while a stone was cut out without hands, which struck the image on its feet of iron clay and broke them in pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, the gold were crushed together and became like shaft from the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away so that no trace of them was found. And the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. That was some dream that Nebuchadnezzar had. Danny went on to interpret that dream. He told him, we're not going to read it here, but uh, he, told, he said, king, he said, you're the head of gold. And then he said, there's coming a kingdom that's coming after you. That's the chest of silver. And then the bronze, that's another kingdom. And the iron and clay, that's another one. But if you go down to verse 40, 44 of chapter 2, Daniel told the king, in the day of, days of the, these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Inasmuch as you saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it broke in pieces the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God has made known to the king what will come to pass after this. The dream is certain and its interpretation is sure. Daniel looked at that king and he said, you can build all the physical kingdoms you want. One day, God's gonna take a rock. It's gonna come without hands. No human being is gonna be involved. God's gonna take a rock that's made without hands and he's gonna smite that, that, that those kingdoms and bring them down, smash them to pieces, and it's gonna hit, that rock will grow and cover the whole earth. What do you think that stone is? What do you think that rock is? That's Jesus. Right now, his kingdom is within us. We carry it wherever we go, but there is coming a day when it will be more than just a spiritual kingdom. There's coming a day when it will be more than just church. There's coming a day when God is coming back and he will bring all those other kingdoms to an end. You could say even that right now, right now God's kingdom has spread throughout the world. There are very few groups of people who have not heard about Jesus. There are whole societies dedicated to make sure that every language has the word of God in its own language. What's happening? That rock, that stone, that mountain is growing. Nothing can stop it. Like I said, I started pulling on the idea of that rock. And it just kept getting bigger. I could probably go on. (laughs) But it's late. Mark, are you the same today that you were 10 years ago? No? You were a lot thinner. I wish I could say that. (laughs) There was one, uh, one artist that wrote a song, and he said, the only thing that stays the same is that everything changes. So that's the only thing that stays the same. Hang around long enough, things are going to change there's one thing that doesn't change same yesterday today and forever if he was faithful to you in your childhood that rock will be faithful to you now we face a lot of things and for most of you I have no idea what you face I'm not you you all face unique things but not one of you faces something that God doesn't know how to handle why do you always point us to Jesus brother Tim I point you to Jesus because I don't have the answer for a lot of you now some of you I might be able to give you an idea I might be able to tell you some things but for a lot of you I don't I gotta point you to Jesus because he's the one God can be your rock. He can be your fortress. 
He can be your salvation. He can be your strength. He can be your deliverer. <laughs> Praise God. Would you stand with me tonight? Everything that we've talked about since the start of this is completely meaningless unless you do one thing. He prays. That will look different from you for you than it does for me. You're not me. But what you do need to do is exercise and praise him. Maybe for you it's not a song. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, one of the things that they talked about in uh, Psalms was boasting on the Lord. Talk about his greatness. Talk about his... Talk to yourself about his greatness. Demonstrate. Chase, chase after him. But put into action these things. If you come in here and you sit down and you say, that was great. Now I'm going to go home and live exactly the same way. You've missed it. Put into action the things you hear. Not just things you hear from me. Put into action the things you hear from Brother B. Put into the, the actions the things you hear from Pastor Put into action the things you hear from any man of God. Put them into action. I've told you, while we've been talking about praise, I've told you over and over again, I am not telling you how to praise. I'm just telling you that you need to praise, and I'm trying to show you ways that you can praise and things you can use to praise, but I can't praise for you. Can't do it. I don't feel like praising. I get it. I've been there. I have been there when the last place I wanted to be was with a microphone in my hand singing a song. I was uh, throwing myself a pity party one time, which is not uncommon for me. That's one of my struggles. (laughs) Poor me. And I was sitting on a pew. And uh, my Uncle Tim, who I am named after, came up to sit next to me. Well, actually, he didn't come up to sit next to me. He just came to the front. And I, here I was. I was feeling uh, pretty down about all the things that weren't happening in my life. Pretty upset about all the things that I wanted to see and I wasn't seeing. When my Uncle Tim was born, the umbilical cord was wrapped around his neck. Uh, He lived 60 years with the mentality of a 12-year-old. Never drove a car. He did hold a job, believe it or not. But he never drove a car, never lived on his own. And looking at him, you would think, what does he have to feel good about? At least that's sometimes how I thought. But as I sat there throwing myself in my pity party, my Uncle Tim came forward and he began to sing. I, I don't remember the song, but he began to sing. And tears just poured down his face and it hit me. If, if, if he can praise the Lord. When from my perspective, I have so much more than him. And here I am throwing myself a pity party. If he can praise the Lord, why can't I? God has given you many things, whether you realize it or not. Praise the Lord. Let's bow our heads. Lord Jesus, you see all these people here tonight, Lord God. 
I'm asking you, Jesus, give us opportunities to praise you throughout the remainder of this week. Give us opportunities to exalt you, to lift you up. Whether it be uh, through singing, Lord God, or just boasting about you, Lord Jesus, or telling other people about your greatness, or just talking to ourselves about how good and how great you are. Give us the courage, Lord God, to praise you when we don't feel like it, God. To praise you when the last thing we want to do is raise our hands or lift our voice, God. Help us to praise you, Jesus, when we would rather be throwing stones. Help us to exalt you, lift you up, magnify your name. Show us your glory, God. Show us your power, Jesus. Hold nothing back, God. Hold nothing back on our account, but move in all your greatness, in all your goodness. I see you, Lord Jesus, everywhere I look, and I know that you are in the lives of every single person in this room, God. Make yourself evident, Jesus. Open our eyes to see your greatness. Open our eyes to see your goodness, God. Give us cause to worship and to exalt your name, to praise you, to lift you up, to glorify you. Give you glory. I want to give you honor. I want to give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord.